This is Code.org. I'm currently working on CS Discoveries. I'm on the Physical Computing Unit, and I'm on the Lesson Arrays and For Loops. Let's see. Knowing when to stop. <laughs> if you click the button too many times in the last level, you got an error. And I did. It's also why all of the lights are currently on. And we got an error because we, well, I bet it will say. Whenever you're writing code that repeats, you should think about when to stop repeating. Yeah, we ran out of buttons. Do this. This program is similar to the previous one, but there is a conditional conditional. A condition is an if statement. It's going to check a condition. Conditional inside the event handler. You'll need to complete the conditional so that we don't try to toggle the LED, an LED that doesn't exist. Would your code work for viewer? Uh, would your code work without changes for a board with more or fewer LEDs? If not, could you modify so it would work? Ah, all right. So well, let's first. Conditionals are this. They're critical to coding. It is an if statement. That's checking a condition. Well, what do we want it to check? What we want it to know is there are 10 LEDs, right? So we go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. If we're counting on from the index since we start at zero with indexes the tenth LED is actually the number nine and we don't want it to go to ten so if we're gonna want to check we if is checking if this is true it will run the code inside so what's the code inside color LEDs current LED toggle so if this statement is true, it will let us run that code. If it is not true, the code inside of our if statement gets ignored and skipped. So we want it to be true as long as there are LEDs to go ahead and toggle on. So if, and now the variable is current LED equals zero. And we hear each time we to hit the toggle button over here, we are going to add current LED plus one is the new current LED. So if we start at zero, zero plus one, the new current LED would be one. Then we click it again, one plus one, the new current LED would be two. And what do we want to go to? Well, we don't want to get above 10. So let's say as long as current underscore LED is less than 10, we can run this code. If it's not, it will just skip it. So, oh, nope, current LED isn't. It would just skip all that code and come to the bottom here and be done. Let's give it a shot. So they're going on fine. Now, this is where we got an error last time. I'm going to click it another time. No error, because the code isn't running. But, uh... And now, what we want to look at is this. Would your code work without changes for a board with more or fewer LEDs? No, this code wouldn't work, right? If we had fewer LEDs, well, then this says less than 10. It would try to turn on LEDs that aren't there, okay? So what they're getting at is there's a better way to do this than just putting the number in itself. Since we know, if we look at this, color LEDs is already an array. So we know that's an array we could use. Now, how could we figure out how long that array is to make sure we never go beyond it? Well, we learned in earlier lessons, color LEDs dot length, whoops. You could also grab a dot length. I think it's from very, yep. Color LEDs dot length should actually do the same thing because this will make sure the current LED that number is never going to be on the actual length of the color LEDs array. And the color LEDs array is the color LEDs on the board. Let's try this. -da 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 -da. No error, no error, no error. No errors, and I keep clicking. And this one, it could be used no matter how many LEDs are on a board or if we switched out the board. Awesome. Let's keep going. 